So this is Atlantic CDA doing a part two, uh, more detailed discussion of Python uh, versus Rust with the focus on electronic design automation. So in this video, I'm not really going to be talking about web frameworks such as Iron, Nickel, U, Django, or Flask. It's going to have general issues in the two languages, but a little bit more centered towards um, electronic design automation. So previous videos have focused on programmatically generated libraries. I also use uh, Python to do analysis, design tools, um, and also a lot of automatic code generation um, and general automation for going between block diagrams and code. So those are the things that I use Python for currently, and the real question is, um, can I start using Rust uh, effectively in this space? So these are some of the questions that I've asked myself, and really the number one is, is the application going to be for me, or is it going to be for other people, and how widely distributed is it going to be? So I've been using Python for 11 years. I really think it's a very efficient language. It's just full of uh, libraries and obviously uh, machine learning, um, you know, genetic algorithms, neural networks, um, computer vision, OpenCV are very hot areas in Python. But really, you know, Things like the various templating engines and matplotlib, numpy, are really extremely useful libraries. And IPython Notebook is a real gem in the sense that, you know, for many years I paid good money to use a tool like MathCAD, whereas IPython is, in my view, more powerful than a tool like MathCAD, and obviously it's free and open source. Some of my thoughts on Rust are that I can really appreciate this idea or paradigm of a smart compiler that is insistent on making the compiled code memory safe. And I also appreciate the what I'm considering the Pythonic influence in Rust, which are mainly focused on this iterators and what they're calling consumers. Um, I would say that Rust is definitely more uh, difficult to develop than Python and you know the question would be you know is it worth it and I think that depends on the application and in my case uh, it, it really depends on whether I'm gonna try to make this tool a commercial application widely distributed etc. This is just uh, an excerpt that I took from GitHub under Rustomax, the Rust iterators. Uh, very nice details about how you can do so many different things, uh, like this particular example here, where nums is a vector, and then it's going to iterate over that vector and map basically x, you know, uh, squaring the x term and then collect that into a 32-bit integer so you get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, you know, in my view, this is a Pythonic segment of code. So a little bit more thoughts on Rust is that, you know, you've got this struct and impl methods on a struct. Um, you have to be careful, you know, for example, if you want to, coming from Python, you just have to be careful about how you use this um, structure. So a little bit more thoughts on Python, coming back to this idea of, distributing code. 
I have used Cython extensively, uh, particularly where I wanted to make a portion of a GUI run fast. And, you know, the compiled version of the Cython code is going to be pretty difficult to reverse engineer. But um, if you're using Cython to, say, not only speed things up, but obfuscate, um, you know, obviously compared to something like Rust, that's just not entering into the picture because everything is compiled. So really the bottom line, what is, what is the verdict here for me? Um, pri primarily, I'm going to continue to use Python for my EDA applications where I build various tools uh, to help me with my hardware designs and my FPGA designs. Uh, you know, and I would emphasize that Python has this really rich ecosystem. But with all that said, if I was going to start a new design, um, per perhaps a, a performant single page web assembly app, so if I wanted to migrate a design from QT or QML into uh, a high performant performance web app, that can compile to WebAssembly, I would um, definitely choose Rust. Um, if I was making some command line tools that I wanted to distribute um, very easily to people using different operating systems, I would strongly consider Rust. But for my mainstream work, um, for you know, the debate that I created within myself about, you know, whether to use Python or Rust, uh, predominantly it's going to be Python. So if you've liked this video, uh, if you've appreciated some of the points uh, in here, please give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and uh, thank you very much.